do to maintain the attention of an easily distracted generation. What I was made for .com. We live in a day and a time and a culture that is consumed with image. Whether it's the news, uh, it's billboards, it's advertisements, magazines, television. Images are just constantly thrown our way. And it seems like people spend their entire lives striving to achieve an image. See, we're surrounded by a culture that's constantly telling us that our image isn't good enough. And that we have to achieve an image to be a person of success. But you know what? Image falls short. An image is something that is perceived by somebody. And what's funny about our image is it'll change from one setting to the next. We can be in one group and they'll see us as part of the group because our image fits in. But, but then we'll go be with another group and they'll look at us as an outsider. And we like to identify this as something that takes place in the world, but the truth of the matter is we've been taught this by the church for ages. See, I believe that holiness is the standard God intended His people to live by. But for so long, the church has said that holiness is an appearance, that holiness is an image. And they've taught us that it's the way we look and it's the way we dress and it's the way we act that makes us holy. Christ encountered religious leaders of His day with a very similar situation. In Matthew, he says, You scribes and Pharisees, you are like whitewashed tombs. And though you're beautiful on the outside, you're full of dead people's bones. And though you appear to be righteous outwardly, within you are full of hypocrisy and full of lawlessness. See, God doesn't call us to an image. For so long, we've got an image confused with this precious thing that God does call us to. And that's our identity. You see, our image and our identity are two different things. Our image is determined by those who we're around, but our identity remains the same. Our identity is, in essence, those set of unique qualities that make us who we are. The individuality that encompasses us as a person. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God said, Let us create man in our image, like us. And He created them, both male and female. God doesn't call you to an image because He's already given you one. Your pursuit for life isn't your quest to find an image because God said you were created in His. And to go looking for another image is to in essence say to God, your image isn't good enough for me. But see, God is calling us to that identity. Paul says to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he says, don't neglect the gift that was given to you by prophecy and the laying on of hands of elders. But be faithful to it because by this you will save yourself and your hearers. The gift that was given to Timothy, the gifts that were given to us, those unique things that God created us to do, those talents He invested in us. So our quest is not for an image, but for our identity, to find ourselves in God. In Romans... It says this, that we are one body and that there are many members and not any member has the same function. But though we are one body, we are individually members of it. How important it is for us to be the individuals God called us to be and, and not to be overwhelmed and consumed with image, but to be an individual, someone unique in God. And as we find those talents and we find our uniqueness, we'll find that He begins to order our steps time and time again. distracted generation. What I was made for.com